Sydney is reeling this morning after an orthodox bishop was attacked with a knife during a church service last night in what police have declared a terrorist act. The attack occurred at the Assyrian Orthodox Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley with graphic video showing Bishop Ma Mari Emmanuel being stabbed. A 16-year-old boy has been arrested and is in police custody. Enraged crowds then gathered outside the church, clashing with more than 100 police and leaving two officers badly injured in scenes which have been described as totally unacceptable. Whilst police were responding to the incident at Wakeley with New South Wales Police Ambulance to provide assistance to those injured, including the offender, people converged on that area and began to turn on police. People used what was available to them in the area, including bricks, concrete, palings, to assault police and throw missiles at police and police equipment and police vehicles. I want to make something very, very clear. There is no such thing in Australia in taking the law into your own hands. It doesn't exist. That's for several reasons. Firstly, you will be met by the full force of the law if there's any attempt for tit-for-tat violence in Sydney over the coming days. Secondly, you are diverting police equipment, investigation uh, power, as well as resources away from the investigation of this crime. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, every religious leader representing communities across Western Sydney has expressly said, don't do it. And for more on this terrible story, Jessica Rendell joins me now from the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley. Jess, just take us through what happened. Well, James, essentially last night the bishop was giving a sermon and during this that was all live streamed, a 15-year-old boy allegedly lunged forward and stabbed him. Other churchgoers then rushed to his defence to try and help him, to try and hold the boy back. They were injured in the process and now three people are in hospital, including the bishop, because of this attack. Uh, two of those are police officers who were then injured in riots that broke out outside. We know that here at the church. There were hundreds of people who were angry by this stabbing and they then took to the streets and started jumping up and down on police cars, throwing objects at each other. And here this morning you can really see the what's left of all of these fights that happened last night. There's shattered rocks on the ground, cars with smashed glass. We know that there were up to 100 police officers who attended here last night, including more than 30 to 40 police cars. Many were so damaged that they had to be towed away. So the police response to this was huge. And we also know that emergency service workers, paramedics who attended the scene had to hide inside the church because they feared for their life. Now, speaking to community members here today, they say that they are absolutely shocked that this has happened in their neighbourhood. Many woke to the sounds of smashing rocks and cars last night. And I can't imagine how scary that would have been for them, James. And Jess, uh, what are the sort of things you're hearing from uh, people in the area this morning? Well, they were saying that the bishop is a much-loved member of this community and that many people were shocked to hear that this had happened. And now, of course, with it being declared a terrorist attack, that news, too, is just reverberating throughout the community and people are still waking up to this news and trying to come to terms with what's happened here in their neighbourhood. The bishop remains in hospital in a serious but stable condition. And we also know that there were several other people who were injured, too, in these riots. Now, the Premier and Police Commissioner have both said that they do not, uh, that they condemn these attacks, that Australians should not be uh, using, doing tit-for-tat attacks like this, and that there is plenty of vision that was taken overnight, and we've played some of that for you. So they will be looking for those offenders that damaged property, that injured people, injured police officers. One police officer had a brick thrown at their face. Another police officer sustained injuries to their face and their legs. So it was quite the intense scene here last night and quite scary for people living in and around this neighbourhood. It's quite a quiet neighbourhood here. All right, uh, Jessica Rendell, thank you. 
Let's go to Canberra now, where the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, says he's been briefed by the Australian Federal Police and security agencies about the stabbing attack. Joining me now from Parliament House is political reporter Monty Boville. Monty, uh, good morning. What's the Prime Minister had to say? Well, James, we know that this was declared a terrorist attack this morning. We have heard from New South Wales Police Commissioner Karen Webb. She says that it appears to be religiously motivated extremism. Now, in the last little while, the Prime Minister has just done a few radio interviews. We know that the uh, joint counter-terrorism investigation is now underway. That involves the Australian Federal Police. ASIO and New South Wales Police. The Prime Minister says he was briefed this morning by the head of the AFP and also the Director General of ASIO. Uh, he spoke on ABC Melbourne a little um, short time ago. Here's what he had to say. Well, there's been a declaration of uh, a terror incident, uh, which means that it is ideologically motivated. Uh, but what we what we are doing here is going through uh, the detail in a systemic way, allowing the police and the security agencies to do their job. My job as prime minister is to support the police and the security agencies, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what I will do each and every day. The prime minister, Anthony Albanese, speaking there. And uh, Monty, what other government reaction has there been so far? Well, James, we know that the National Security uh, Committee meeting will um, uh, be underway uh, in Canberra this morning. So that's uh, following that declaration of this terrorism incident. Involved in that meeting is Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill. Now, she has put out a short statement on social media. She says that she has received briefings from our agencies overnight about the shocking incident in Wakely. She says police are continuing their investigations, but our thoughts are with those who are injured, uh, their families and the community, as well as with the first responders who attended to the victims and restored order last night. She says that Australia's most valuable asset is our social cohesion. In tough times, we must come together. So that was some of the comments from Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill. We know more broadly that Australia's uh, terrorism threat level is uh, at possible. It has been listed as possible for some time, but it is worth noting that there are still three levels above that, probable, expected and certain. Uh, the a uh, ASIO Director General Mike Burgess has been saying for some time that this uh, threat level has uh, is under constant review and we have to be uh, more vigilant now given the uh, events uh, around the world. So certainly we'll be uh, watching developments after that meeting this morning. All right, uh, Monty Boval in Canberra, thank you.